Good morning, everyone. A lot of happy faces. I hope you guys are uh, caffeinated and ready to go. Our theme this month is education. I want to introduce today our woman of the hour. She is a co-founder at Zoo Labs, and today she's going to tell you all about her 10 years of experience, 10 plus years of experience uh, in production management, uh, working with media, branding, strategy, uh, music, and all, all sorts of other production in the works. Uh, now she manages and directs a immersive incubator space out of uh, West Oakland. So I want to welcome up on stage, please give a hand to Anna Aquistapache. Hello. Thank you guys for all waking up so early and for being here. Um, I'm, I'm really uh, grateful that Creative Mornings asked me to come talk to you guys. I want to say thank you also to the Impact Hub for hosting us. Um, and so, as Yvonne mentioned, I've worked in a lot of different creative industries. And uh, from film to art to design. And I'm really happy about working in music now um, as the co-founder of Zoo Labs. It's uh, such an important part of my daily life and it's probably the most universal art form. But as an industry, it's also very challenging. Like a lot of other creative industries, there have been a lot of changes over the last 10 years, especially. Um, there have been big disruptions, but that also means that there are a lot of big opportunities. So I'm excited to talk to you today about what we're doing at Zoo Labs. I wanted to start off by asking, do we have any musicians in the audience? Awesome. Great. Do we have any entrepreneurs in the audience? I know we heard from one. Bunch. Cool. I want to play a little game with you. I'm going to show you some slides up here on the screen. Um, and for each characteristic, I want you to think whether we're referring to a musician or an entrepreneur. Just think about it. Big dreamer. Hustling 24-7. Stays up all night working. Risk taker. Improviser. Believes the impossible is possible. Probably drinks too much coffee. So um, hopefully some of those were um, blurred lines for you, and that's because musicians and entrepreneurs actually have a lot in common. And at Zoo Labs, one of our guiding principles is that musicians can be amazing entrepreneurs. And in fact, they already are. Musicians hustle. They're always networking. They're always looking for new opportunities. They're busting their asses for their, their art. They're creating value. I have no doubt that musicians are natural entrepreneurs. However, it's hard to make a living as a musician. And after seeing a lot of the challenges that artists face every day to sustain their careers, we created Zoo Labs to give them the tools to make their work more effective, to make them more powerful entrepreneurs. And ones that can build not only sustainable, but also profitable businesses. What we're really working on is understanding what it takes to change a mindset in an industry that is really stuck in its ways. And we're starting with the creators at the center of that industry. Um, we're starting with musicians. Through our music residency program, which I'll be telling you about today, we, we provide the tools and the skills for these musicians to create strategy and the confidence to implement them. One thing that's sure about the future is that it won't be the same as today. So we need artists that are thinking for themselves, that are not following a formula, that aren't sticking to the status quo. So I want to take a minute to describe the Zoo Labs music residency to you, for those of you who don't know it. We think of it as somewhere between an artist residency and a business accelerator. Based on an application process open to any teams of music makers, any genre from anywhere in the world, we select two teams to come to our studio for 10 days for an immersive um, residency. They live at our studio, all expenses paid. They get workshops in the morning. 
um, interactive workshops with mentors uh, on subjects such as experience design, understanding your fan. Um, we also talk about music law and some of the nuts and bolts. Then in the afternoon, they go into the studio with an engineer and they make new work. So they leave this program with not only new recorded music, but they also leave with a business plan. We're a nonprofit, but we like to think of ourselves as a music accelerator. So today I'm gonna give you a closer look at what we've designed at Zoo Labs, how we're doing it, and where we're going with it. Because we've made some important choices in the way that we designed our program. It's been a process of translating business to musicians, and I think that process can be really informative for all of us. It's often said that business lacks creativity, but often creativity also lacks business. And at Zoo Labs, we want to bridge those two things, and we're doing it through education. When we started thinking about how we would teach business to musicians, there were a couple of obvious ways we could have taken it. We could have said, let's just um, you know, get some people from the music industry. They must know what's going on. They do it every day. They know how it works. But actually, when we looked out at the music industry, what we saw were a lot of broken models. It used to be that you could be an artist, uh, make music, hopefully get discovered, and a label would come in, whisk you away, take care of all your business, probably exploit your creativity. But there's been a massive change in the industry over the, over the past 10 years, and a big change in the, in the structure of power. Um, does anybody know how much music is uploaded to SoundCloud every minute? Every minute. Does somebody want to take a guess? 12, 12 hours. 12 hours every minute, 12 hours of music is uploaded to SoundCloud. Um, and, you know, this kind of thing used to be under tight wraps. It used to happen behind closed doors um, through tightly controlled distribution channels. But that's not the case anymore, and artists really have an opportunity. On the other hand, when we were thinking about how to design this program, we could have said, okay, let's go to the business experts. They know what's going on. They know how to crunch numbers. They know how to build products, how to market them, how to make money. But let's be honest, we know how a lot of creatives feel about business people. So we wanted, we wanted to make a new place where new things are possible, and so we made Zoo Labs, where musicians can come to get comfortable with their entrepreneurial side. And the idea of labs is really important to us because it's some place where experiments happen. It's a place where there are no predetermined answers, where you can take risks, where you can build and discover and innovate. It's a place to learn by doing things that you don't usually do. So we became a platform for a new kind of education for musicians, one that's based on entrepreneurship and creativity and design thinking. There's no easy answer to know what to do when you wake up in the morning. That's the hustle. But we can share skills and tools that make it possible to forge new paths, to discover new territories, to come up with new models. It can be very challenging, but also rewarding. And I want to take a moment to uh, do a call out to Oakland because um, you know people ask us, why aren't you in LA? Why aren't you in New York? That's where all the music is happening. But there's a really special sort of creativity here, and there's grit. And so we think it's the perfect place to build a new perspective on the music industry. So I want to talk about four key ways in which we're translating business to musicians um, to make them better entrepreneurs, because this isn't education as usual. Um, this isn't teachers in classrooms um, where you know teacher knows best. We're, um, we're translators. We're creating a way for musicians to learn business as a creative practice and one that's compatible with them making music. This is Geneva from Bell's Atlas. It's a local group. One thing we know from having talked to a lot of musicians is that they can feel alienated by business. It's a language that they don't speak. It's often the counterpart to their passion for making art. It's a Debbie Downer. It's, they spend a lot of time avoiding it, actually, um, thinking maybe other people have the answer when actually they don't, which is too bad, but it's true. So that's why we start every residency with a 
healthy session of rapid prototyping. Has anybody here done a rapid prototyping exercise? A couple of you. Um, it is really fun, and this is what it looks like. This is Wages and Mad Sata. They were with us in September. So rapid prototyping exercise, you get 20 minutes to come up with a new product, to name it, to give it a tagline, to tell us who's going to use it, to tell us why people are going to pay for it, to give us a business model. And at first, it feels really challenging as the clock is ticking away. But then as the clock ticks away, people start having fun. And it gets oftentimes pretty goofy. Um, and the reason why this is so important to us is because it breaks down the notion that it, an idea has to be fully formed from the get-go. It gives people space to experiment, to let go of perfection, to roll up their sleeves and open themselves to new ways of thinking. To be entrepreneurial, you've got to embrace the unknown and you've got to trust that you're going to get there one way or another. We have dinners at Zoo Labs, and Scott Snibby, who some of you may know as um, the creator of the Biophilia app for, for Bjork, said something that really stuck in my mind. There are a lot of right ways to do things. So that may seem simple, but it's kind of profound. Um, we need to shake the idea that there's one right answer out there. This isn't a multiple choice situation. It might be easier if there were, but unfortunately, there's not one right answer. So here's another thing that we know. Musicians move. They create with movement on the keys of a piano, on, by picking strings, um, by banging on drums. And so one of the core design approaches that we use to um, teach in our workshops is the idea of kinetic learning. A really good example of this is using the business model canvas. Residents use post-its to brainstorm ideas for the different building blocks of their business. And this is, if you haven't seen it before, it's an amazing tool. It beautifully and simply um, breaks down all of the components of any business, whether it's a coffee shop, whether it's a band, whether it's a big corporation like Apple. Um, you, know, you can see here, on the bottom, the costs that are going out. On the other side, you can imagine the revenues that are coming in. You can use this to look at who the fans are. You can think about how to reach them. From an entrepreneurial standpoint, these fans are customers. And this, this business model canvas really helps our residents understand how to treat them as customers, how to develop an experience that they'll enjoy and that they'll engage with and that hopefully they'll pay for. So making something that they can use and stand in front of, we print it really big and we put it on the wall. They can stand in front of it, move things, take ideas on and off, recombine them in new ways. And it's a lot like making a song. So I wanna show you two photos that I love. Um, this first one is of the Boston Boys working on their business plan. You see them standing around, discussing, exchanging ideas. This next one is the Boston Boys in the studio making a new song. What I love about this is that the configuration is the same. They're jamming. They're there exchanging ideas, hashing things out, figuring out new ways to put things together. This tool, the Business Model Canvas and others that we use throughout the residency, transforms something that might be uncomfortable into something that they can relate to and use. It makes it more approachable. It mirrors what they do best. And in fact, when they dive into their business model and they start to get a deeper understanding of who they are and what they're offering, we've heard over and over again that these workshops really affect how they make music. And it brings a new focus to what they're doing. As one resident said, it helped us get some of the clutter out of our music. Like, that's, that's really powerful for us. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is one of our most popular workshops. It's about time travel. We don't have a 
they unfortunately don't get into a DeLorean, but um, they do get to work with Institute for the Future to envision themselves in the near and far future. We asked them to do an exercise where they um, imagine the headline that would be written about them on the front page of a newspaper in 2024. This exercise really helps them envision themselves um, and envision themselves and where they want to be. Big companies do this all the time. They strategize about the future. Think of Google's self-driving car. They do this because they want to make sure that they're dreaming big. They want to make sure that they're not just compromising for what's here today. It's a powerful exercise for them to understand where they want to be and figure out how to get there. It's one of the steps to building a plan. It's like a North Star that they can follow. So finally, the fourth idea that I wanted to make a call out to, and one that's really important to our program, is team dynamics. There's a really strong myth in the music industry and in others, and it's this myth of the star, of one creative genius at the center of it all, the one who gets all the attention and all the focus. But more likely than not, there's a very strong team behind that star. And it's a strong team of smart people that are making that project successful. Bands are notorious for breaking up early because they can't manage their collaboration, they implode. But it's really important to teach, that's why we think it's really important to teach them how to manage their collaboration and how to work together. To respect their differences, to tackle conflict, to figure out by themselves and for themselves what they're doing and why they're doing it, where they want to go. This is Halcyon Air sitting in our garden. This is a bond that can really carry them into the future. We ask everyone to come to the table in our residency, whether you're the drummer, whether you're the lead singer, whether you're the manager, and um, talk about the goals that that team has. Everyone has a role. You know, maybe it's fine to have someone who's better at numbers and someone who's better at booking gigs, someone who's ready to go pitch to partners. It's the same as when they play music, and it's important for them to figure out where everyone fits in. This is the Boston Boys again. So what I've described is the beginning of their journey, but uh, we've given them, hopefully, some new perspective on how to come up with fresh ideas, on how to organize their thoughts and clarify them, how to dream bigger, and how to be a strong team into the future. The next big thing for us is creating a community. And what we want to create is our musicians that think differently, that think differently about how they run their business and about how they achieve their goals and what it is to be a musician in the 21st century. We want to see a new landscape, a new landscape for the music industry and one that's driven by creativity and not the status quo, and one with the artists in the center. When we've created this community of activated creatives who learn by doing, who aren't afraid of learning to do new things, who are able to take their dreams and translate them into reality, that's when we've um, helped build a community that can support itself. When our residents leave, they themselves become accelerators. They do this via the relationships they have, via, via the things that they put out, the things that they try. So together we're accelerating the music industry and we're accelerating towards a better future and making progress. I love music and I also love business. So for me, it's a really rewarding position to be in, to see and to help creativity get the attention and the success that it deserves. And I also love seeing the artists that make the music that I love be able to support themselves as artists. Before I finish, I want to leave you with a thought. When we think about, when we think about the education that we're, we're getting or the education that we've gotten, it's important to think about what's being left out. What do you need to practice and understand in order to achieve your goals? 
Whether you're an illustrator or a visual artist or a community organizer, you don't need someone else to think about your business for you. You need to get the right people and take it on. So avoid thinking that there's one right model out there or just because you got an education that you don't need to keep learning. Translate education across all disciplines and across people because that's where things get interesting. So thank you.